Right, should we start broadcasting? Yeah. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, good morning to you all. And um, we have a few more people coming in, but we're going to start uh, promptly and we're going to end promptly. So uh, welcome to you all um, this morning. My name is Denise Charlton and I am the Chief Executive of the Community Foundation for Ireland. And I want to really thank you all for joining us this morning. It's a really important moment for us in our response to uh, the challenges that have been caused by um, COVID-19 and the pandemic. And it's a real honor for us to be hosting this morning the webinar. And it's attracted you uh, that come from the broadest spectrum across our, our society, charity, community and nonprofit sectors. So welcome to each and every one of you. Um, on the 13th of February last, uh, life as we know it changed uh, drastically. Um, the con first confirmed case of COVID uh, set us on a path that will take us uh, a long time, if not decades, to uh, reverse. As everybody will know, it has changed the way that we uh, go about our daily lives. It's changed the way we work together. It's changed the way we interact. It's changed the way we support each other uh, and our communities. And I suppose for us at the Community Foundation for Ireland, we have really recognised that changing environment. We're really conscious in that change environment of the challenges that face the most vulnerable of our society, um, as you all are. And we are really conscious that very often it is the most vulnerable that are asked to make the most sacrifices and that are impacted uh, the most. Um, so for us, I suppose, our, 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 for the last 20 years, our, we've had a mission of equality um, for all within Thriving Community, and that has guided everything that we do, and it continues to guide us in this challenging time and our responses in this time. Um, when the pandemic uh, took hold, the Foundation really immediately tried to set out and identified ways that we could help while staying through to that mission. And um, through the then leadership of Tina Roach, who many of you, if not all of you, will know, um, we partnered with the RTE Does Comic Relief Steering Group, RTE, Kite Entertainment, to look at new ways that we could uh, help and support the brilliant work that you're all doing. And the result, as you will know, was not just an amazing and brilliant night of entertainment and Irish broadcasting, but we also saw a coming together of 1.4 uh, million viewers, corporate donors, and then a matching funding agreement by government, all coming together as one, which was uh, pretty unique. Um, and donations actually have continued 
continued. Uh, so we hope that we'll go over that six million. But I suppose what it shows us, and I'm sure yourselves, is that the Irish people really recognise what you are all doing, the value of the work that's happening in communities, and that they want that to continue. So while the lights and the cameras might have gone down and the mics on RTE does comic relief, obviously the hard work continues. Um, and our dedicated team, and you'll meet Rosie and Patrick later on in the webinar, and they've been putting together the processes um, to allow the applications to open so that we can disperse the much needed funds across the country in the fairest way possible. And we're now at that point here today and we're uh, delighted to be able to inform you of what those processes might look like. So my two colleagues will set out the criteria uh, for applying and the timelines and the processes um, today. But just to say, don't be worried if you miss any piece of information, we're broadcasting it. And the applications will open today, but they'll remain open till the 30th of September. And there'll be lots of ways of getting the information um, after this morning. Um, we, as you know, work with uh, the, the most vulnerable um, in our communities and we're particularly keen in these processes to hear from charities and non-profits who are working with those who are most vulnerable and most affected um, by COVID-19. Um, in summary, there will be two strands. Uh, the digital uh, for demand groups can seek support for investment for software, hardware to improve their ability to continue to the, do the work that they do. But most importantly, while keeping their staff, volunteers and the people they support safe. The Adapt and Respond will allow groups to continue to seek funding to, uh, to continue the great work that they do or to meet any new challenges that arise because of COVID-19. Um, as I said, a recording of the webinar will be available and it will remain available until the 30th of September. Then in conclusion, um, at the outset I set out the importance for us of today and for you. Um, and I wanted to also take the opportunity to really acknowledge um, the huge effort by so many involved to bring us to this point. Uh, thinking of the work that went into the planning, all the participants who gave their time freely, and of course, the huge generosity uh, that saw the public donors and the government, as I said, come together as one. And um, it would be very remiss of me if I didn't acknowledge the leadership of the amazing Theodore O'Kane, uh, the powerhouse that helped us uh, bring us to this point and the project to fruition, which is incredible. And so now for us, it's time to see the generosity and um, put into actions. Um, as we gather virtually, it would also be remiss of me to let the moment pass without reflecting on the wider challenges that face us in the next few weeks and their longer term implications. Um, the sector, like ourselves, will be bracing itself for the impact of the next budget, Budget 2021. And I suppose I just wanted to take the opportunity to assure you that we will be uh, really working to try and ensure that those challenges are responded to. We'll be working to ensure that any budget measures will see uh, will be uh, sustainable, equitable and fair, the values that we all share together. Um, our involvement in RTE Comic Relief has shown that we're conscious as a foundation, that we have to adapt, that we have to look for new opportunities, but we have to hold true to our mission and our values. They're important now to us as they were when Tina set it up 20 years ago. So I want to thank you for your interest, for your engagement with us as a foundation, and I want to thank you for uh, participation today. I hope that you'll find it useful, um, and I want to thank you for all the amazing work that you do, and to urge you to stay safe, and to continue to do the fantastic work that you do. I'm going to now pass over to my two colleagues um, and I'll do a short intro on both. Um, so first of all, Patrick Sweeney, who many of you will know, a grants and donor service advisor. And Patrick has a range of experience across policy programs and fundraising with the NGO sector. His academic background includes international relations, um, charity law, trustee and, governorship, and governance. Um, and also digital marketing. And many of you will know Patrick's work from Glenn, from Stonewall, and um, he's worked here uh, nationally and in the UK, and more recently was working with Social Entrepreneur Ireland, and many of our leading social entrepreneurs will have had his assistant um, as he helped them shape uh, and scale their organizations. 
Rosie McDonough is our Grants and Donor Service Assistant and she joined the team in 2019. Uh, Rosie's fantastic background in community and student fundraising, encouraging all to participate more actively. Uh, her background, academic background is history and uh, ancient history and she has a particular interest uh, in homelessness. Um, she was uh, volunteering with her student union um, and she has her own uh, uh, operation, a volunteer group which tackles uh, hygiene poverty. Uh, so Rosie and Patrick are going to bring us through the application process, everything we need to know, the timeline, etc. So I'm going to hand over to Patrick and then he will hand you over to Rosie. I'll leave you in their capable hands. Thanks Patrick. Great, thanks Denise. Um, good morning everybody and welcome to the RT Does Comic Relief webinar. So over the course of the next hour, we're going to tell you a bit more about RT Does Comic Relief, the focus of the fund and how to access funding. Um, so the team will be monitoring our email inbox. So this is covidresponse at foundation.ie, where you can send any questions you might have. So this email address is listed at, on every slide throughout. Um, so you should be able to pull that up when you need it. Um, so we will answer a selection of these questions towards the end of the webinar. For those we do not get to answer live, we will respond to you directly via email. So today, the topics we plan to cover include some background on the Community Foundation for Ireland, for those of you who are unfamiliar with our work, an overview of RT Does Comic Relief and how this fund is structured, and then we'll look at more detailed aspects such as the application form and how to apply. So before I move on, just some general housekeeping. Um, as Denise mentioned, this webinar is being recorded and will be available to view on our website for the duration of the application period, which is from today, the 4th of August, all the way till September 30th, which is the closing date for applications. As you've probably noticed, you are all on mute. Um, if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please log out and then log back in via the Eventbrite link that you were sent. Um, also, if you can't hear me, please ensure your volume is turned on. So um, those are just the general housekeeping principles and I guess I'll kick off. So as Denise mentioned, the Community Foundation for Ireland is a registered charity. It was established in 2000 in order to support the nonprofit sector and encourage the growth of philanthropy in Ireland. The organization was founded by Tina Roach, who was CEO for 20 years before stepping down just recently. The Community Foundation for Ireland is part of a global movement of foundations which act as the bridge between individuals, companies and families who are interested in giving back via philanthropy and those communities who need the most support. The aim of the Community Foundation is to provide guidance, support and advice to both philanthropists as well as community organisations, turning giving in the moment to structured and impactful grant making. So the Community Foundation for Ireland provides grants in two ways, through its endowed fund and through our donor advised fund. So open calls for applications run periodically throughout year, each year and target specific areas of work, normally focusing on supporting the most vulnerable in society. So the work of the Community Foundation for Ireland and its team is built upon four core values, each of which is listed on screen integrity, collaboration, diversity and inclusion, and leadership. These are values we also look for in grant applications and projects that we are seeking, seeking that are seeking funding and support. So just to give you an overview of some of the numbers um, and a sense of the grant making that we, we do. So 2009 was one of the biggest years to date for the foundation. We made 591 grants to organisations and communities across Ireland, as well as internationally. These grants came to a cumulative total of 8,150,000, or 8.15 million, um, and averaged 13.8 thousand per grant. Since establishment, the Community Foundation for Ireland has distributed over 50 million euro in grant aid, so quite a significant amount. This year, we're set to significantly increase our level of giving in line with the needs of the NGO sector in Ireland. So as Denise mentioned, uh, to the DEN leadership of Tina Roach, who many of you already know, the Community Foundation for Ireland 
We're delighted to partner with the Comic Relief Ireland Steering Group and RT to run the RT Does Comic Relief Peloton on June 26th. The Teleton was in response to the significant need of the community and voluntary groups across Ireland, many of whom are working to support people affected by COVID-19. Through donations made on the night and the days following the event, close to 6 million euro was raised for the community and voluntary sector. These donations were then matched by the Government of Ireland. This funding will now be distributed by the Community Foundation for Ireland through a process of application and assessment, which we'll talk you through as the webinar goes on. So the funds raised through RT Does Comic Relief will focus on the recovery and rebuilding of Ireland. The fund will focus on supporting non-profit organisations that provide key services and supports to vulnerable individuals who have been affected by COVID-19 across the whole of the Republic of Ireland. The RT Does Comic Relief Fund is divided into two strands, each with different, albeit complementary, objectives. So strand one, demand for digital, aims to support non-profit organizations across Ireland to adapt existing programs or develop new ones by using digital tools or online technology. Strand two is adapt and respond. This aims to support organizations to increase their internal capacity to deliver existing or new activities in response to COVID-19. So as you can see, they're quite similar, but we will pick them apart in a little bit more detail so you can get a real, real really good understanding of how they work and what you can, what projects uh, you can propose um, to the fund. So just in terms of key dates, um, applications open today, August 4th, and will remain open until Wednesday, September 30th at 4.30. Can I please stress, do not leave your application to the last minute. Um, we do anticipate significant interest in this fund. So to help us help you, please submit your application early. Uh, once the application period is closed, all applications will be screened, scored, or screened, reviewed, and scored. And following the assessment period, all applications will be notified of the outcome of their application. Those who are successful will receive funding in December um, in support of their proposed project, which shall begin in January. So this is not an, an immediate response fund. It is looking at um, January to December 2021 is the implementation period. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at your project. So um, in terms of, that's the key timeline. So in terms of the focus of strand one, which is demand for digital. I guess in a sector where the face-to-face -face or direct delivery model has historically been key to providing impactful support, organizations are now faced with a really significant challenge how to support vulnerable and at-risk individuals in a time where one-to-one -one contact is increasingly difficult. For this reason, the Demand for Digital strand seeks to support non-profit organizations across Ireland to adapt their existing programs or develop new ones by using digital tools or online technology. So to break that down a bit, what we're looking to achieve here is to better equip your organizations with the tools you need to deliver existing or new work online or through the use of technology. Um, so as you can see from some of the examples here, examples of projects seeking support from the, this strand might include IT equipment that better enables, that enables better communication amongst your team or with your service users, um, hardware and software to facilitate a socially distant working environment, software to better support your service users virtually, or perhaps website adaptations and development that are a direct response to COVID-19. So these are just a couple of examples of how you might um, utilize online technology or digital tools to actually facilitate better working. Um, but there are other ways that you can apply. So be creative, but um, be specific in the use of digital tools or online technology. Um, as you can see from these examples, we're looking to invest in, in an organization's online or technological capacity so that organizations can perhaps do some or all of the following, which would include, as I say, equipping teams to work better together. Um, or perhaps an organization needs to develop a new section of its website that provides useful resources on how to cope with issues arising from COVID-19. So as I say, there are numerous ways an organization can respond 
what we are looking to do is invest in these tools. Um, so we have discussed some of these examples um, on how you can apply to the fund and what you can apply to the fund for. Um, now we'll look at the types of service users um, we're particularly looking to support. So when applying to the COVID or to EDIS comic relief demand for digital strand, priority will be given to organizations whose primary mission is to provide services to the following vulnerable groups. Travelers and Roma, people with intellectual and physical disabilities. Older people, victims of sexual or domestic violence. Vulnerable children, people and families in unsuitable accommodations such as homeless hubs, direct provision and refuges. Groups that are medically at risk of COVID-19 or other vulnerable groups where mental health has been particularly affected by COVID-19. So as I said, priority will be given to these groups as we have identified them as being the most vulnerable or particularly vulnerable. Um, we will, however, consider applications from organizations whose primary mission doesn't directly support these groups. Um, so it is a case that we're just trying to prioritize specific groups at this point. So in terms of funding available, um, we are keen to ensure that the maximum number of organizations can benefit from this fund. So as such, we base the funding available on the annual income per organization, ensuring there is a fair and impactful distribution of funding across Ireland. Organizations have been divided into five levels, all based on income level. For demand for digital, each organization can apply for up to the maximum amount, amount listed in their category. So for example, organizations with an income under 250,000, the maximum available for in demand for digital will be 3,000 euro. For those in level two, which is organizations with an annual income between 250,000 and 700,000, the maximum available for demand for digital is 5,000 euro. And so on, up to the maximum level, which is level five, which level five is organizations with an annual income more than 12 million euro. Organizations in this category can apply up to 50,000 euro. So just note there that there are two specific pieces in level five, as I said, organizations with an annual income more than 12 million, or if you are a national organization with a significant branch network, you can apply for up to 50,000 euro, irrespective of your annual income. So I'll come back to that a little bit later because I will discuss the total amount available across the two strands. Um, just noting that for national organizations with a branch network under the same constitution, um, you can apply for either a national project, so if, for example, you're applying from your head office, or you can apply for work being carried out at a local level. However, the application needs to be coordinated through your head office, so we won't be looking, we won't be accepting applications from branches across Ireland. It needs to be centralized and you need to coordinate one application and submit that through your head office. Um, as I said, I will come back to the funding available towards the end and we'll discuss the two strands um, together. Um, please note that only one application per organization per strand will be accepted. So you will have to submit two applications across so one application for demand for digital, one application for adapt and respond. They will be assessed separately, so you will have to go through that process. However, if, for example, you're an organization that has several different projects that you think might be suitable for demand for digital, unfortunately, you are going to have to be a little bit more selective at this point and focus in on one particular project that you think is going to be the most beneficial. Um, at this point, as I say, we are anticipating a lot of interest, so we are asking people to be selective and prioritize their greatest area of need. So that's one application per strand, please. Um, great, so I'll move us along to the next area, which is some of the logistics around applying. Now I'll touch on this and I'll come back to it later. Um, so as I mentioned, the fund is open from today, August 4th, and will run the application period is all the way till Wednesday, 30th of September. As I say, please don't, um, please don't leave it till the very last minute. And we would, 
we will uh, applications must meet the criteria that we've set out um, as I say the, we will be looking for some of the supporting documents which is a constitution or memorandum of, of an articles of association and um, organizations will need to provide a bank or credit union statement and this is for verification purposes you will need to provide your most recent annual accounts which will likely be 2019 and if the project you're proposing is working directly with children or vulnerable adults you will have to provide safe learning policies so um, just bear that in mind as you're doing your application do get all those uh, documents in together and um, unfortunately we won't be able to accept applications that are missing any of those documents so please do the due diligence as you're going so then moving quickly on to the strand two which is the adapt and respond strand. So as I say, please do send any questions into COVID response at foundation.ie. Um, my colleagues are monitoring it, so we will answer some of them at the end of the webinar, but we will come back to them all via email. So adapt, uh, strand two, adapt and respond. Um, again, this is somewhat similar, but complementary to strand one. I guess, Due to the changing nature of COVID-19, there's been a significant need for organizations to adapt and respond to a variety of challenges over the last couple of months. And these challenges have both been internal and external. So by investing in organizations and improving their capacity to deliver key activities, we are aiming to create the best possible impact, helping nonprofit organizations to continue to support thousands of vulnerable people throughout Ireland who have been and continue to be affected by COVID-19. So the adapt and respond strand aims to support organizations to increase their internal capacity to deliver existing or new services in response to COVID-19. Although both strands focus on improving an organization's capacity to deliver services, strand one, demand for digital, is very much focused on the use of digital tools or online technology, while strand two is more general and will support a wider variety of of capacity building initiatives, which I'll talk us through in a minute. So, as I say, this is a little bit more general, and um, it is very much around improving an organization's internal capacity to deliver existing or new work um, in response to COVID-19. So, some of the examples that for this fund might include training or upskilling of staff responding to COVID-19, um, research or scoping studies related to COVID-19 and its impact. So if you really need to understand how your service users have been affected, and this is going to help support the program development or program delivery over the next couple of months, you can apply for funding to carry out this work. If, for example, you're in a, or an organization where your strategy has been completely affected by COVID-19, and you now look, need to look at redeveloping this completely, you can apply for funding to facilitate that development as well as developing a fundraising strategy to help fund this new, new organizational strategy. Um, in terms of capacity building, any activity that will have a direct impact on your organization's capacity to deliver services or activities affected by COVID-19. So we're not being too prescriptive here. If a, and a particular service or activity has been particularly affected by COVID-19. Um, if you can make the case and put a project forward, then we will consider this in the review stage. Um, what we've seen over the last couple of months is numerous organizations across the country have had to adapt existing programs and develop a new mode of delivery or new mode of uh, deployment. So if, for example, you have a very strong program and you know it works, but because of COVID-19, you just can't deliver it in the way that you have traditionally, you can apply for funding to help adapt this program into a new way. Also, you may have had to develop new content or you may have identified new areas of need. So if, for example, you need to develop a new module for a program or a new curriculum, there is also the scope to actually apply for that as well. So really be creative in your solutions, but I guess what we're looking to see is that the social impact that you were looking to create is still going to be achieved depending with this new adaptation. And then last uh, but not least is the upscaling of your organization's reach. So this can be physically or by additional resources. So um, 
virtually or online. So what we mean by physically, a lot of organizations have been stretched over the last couple of months. Um, normal service delivery has been significantly affected. So you can apply for additional people power to help deliver services. Um, I will talk about that a little bit more as we go on. Um, or you can apply for new or new virtual tools so, uh, or facilities. So if, for example, you need to develop a new uh, online toolkit, that does fit more into the demand for digital in terms of the physical build, but you may also need to apply for staff time to help develop the content and uh, the structure of what this might look like. So be creative to use the two um, strands to complement one another. So when you're looking at demand for digital, think about the hardware and the software you're going to need. When you're looking at the adapt and response, think about, okay, what is the strategic direction and the operations that I need to, to put in place um, to make this work? So those are just some of the examples. Again, it, this is the adapt and respond is a little bit more open and um, we will consider all applications that come in. Again, as with the uh, demand for digital strand, the priority will be given to these groups, um, or priority will be given to organizations whose primary mission is to provide services to the following vulnerable groups, travelers and Roma, people with intellectual and physical disabilities, older people, victims of sexual or domestic violence, vulnerable children, people and families in unsuitable accommodation, and groups that are medically at risk of COVID-19 and other vulnerable groups where mental health has been particularly affected by COVID-19. Um, of course, all projects must be in line with government uh, guidance and advice about coronavirus. So as I mentioned before, priority will be given to organizations whose primary mission is to support these vulnerable groups. However, all applications will be considered. So as I mentioned earlier in our, the Community Foundation's values, um, Collaboration is a core value with, for us here at the Community Foundation. Um, as such, we encourage organizations working in a similar space to come together to deliver projects or specific pieces of work in order to create increased or outsized impact. For this reason, we've also made it possible for organizations to apply to the RTE Does Comic Relief Fund as a collaboration. So what do we mean by collaboration? For this fund, we see collaboration as the coming together of two or more organizations who have the aim of delivering a joint project or initiative, either locally or nationally, in order to better support their key beneficiaries. So by coming together, we believe there is the potential for organizations to create a much greater impact than might be possible alone. Collaborative projects will also be given priority during assessment and may be awarded a higher level of funding. If you are working in a collaboration with other organizations, in response to the impact of COVID-19 and would like to find out more about how to apply as a collaborative project, please email covidresponse.foundation.ie and one of our team will be happy to discuss whether this is a suitable option. So we will talk you through this in more detail and assess whether this is a suitable pathway for you to apply. And just on the collaboration piece, this is only in the adapt and respond strand. So there is no collaboration element in strand one, it's only in strand two. So in terms of funding available, it is similar in, stru in structure to the demand for digital. So the funding available in the adapt and response strand is also based on an organization's annual income. Um, so talking us through that, there are five levels all based on an organization's annual income. Level one, annual income under 250,000. Level two is annual income between 250,000 and 700,000. Level three is organizations whose annual income is 700,000, between 700,000 and 3 million. Level four, between 3 million and 12 million. Level five is organizations with an annual income more than 12 million or a national organization with a significant branch network. So, as per the demand for digital strand, um, the, within the adapt and respond strand, you can apply for the maximum within your level. So if you're a level one organization, you can apply for up to 3,000. Level two, up to 5,000. Level three, up to 10,000. Level four, up to 25,000. And level five, 50,000. Or again, if you're a national organization, 
with a significant branch network, you can apply up to 50,000, regardless of your annual income. Just to stress there that if you are a national organization with a branch network, you can apply either as your head office to do work within your head office or to do work at your, in your branches throughout the country. However, your application needs to come through one centralized point, which will be your head office. So please do coordinate that. It will probably take some time. So put that time and thought into it. Um, so across the two, in terms of the cumulative amount available, as I say, please use these strands to complement one another. Um, think about what hardware and online tools you need to deliver your services. And then also in terms of the strategy and operational resource you need as well. So combine them, we'll need to apply separately, but have them as one big picture. Um, so as I mentioned in level one, you can apply for up to 3,000 in each strand. So that's bringing you to a cumulative of 6,000 in um, level one. Level two is up to um, 10,000 across strand two, or across the two strands, 5,000 in each. Strand or level three is up to 20,000, which is 10,000 per strand. Strand level four is up to 50,000, which is 25,000 per strand. And of course, level five is up to 100,000, which is 50,000 per strand. As I mentioned, collaborative projects may have the opportunity to um, access additional funding, which will be on it, which we will review as we go. Um, so as I say, only one application per organization per strand. Um, interestingly, I guess for, for organizations applying, um, applications for running costs will be accepted. So volunteer expenses and staff, staff costs will be considered, um, but only if they are part of an overall project cost for adapting and responding. So if you are applying for one particular post and you apply for 25,000 for staff time, you can't simply just apply for staff time. It needs to be part of a bigger overall project. So there needs to be other elements there. Um, so just consider that as you're applying, don't just apply for one position for six months. Think about how this works as a project. What are the other elements that this particular person will need to can carry out? Um, are there other aspects such as uh, trading and things that you need to be considered as well. So just note that as you're going along. Um, as I mentioned earlier, national organizations with a branch network under the same constitution can apply either nationally or at branch level. Um, but you do need to coordinate this and um, through your head office. So lots of detail there, but um, if you have any questions, do please send those in. We'll be happy to answer those. And what I'll do now is I'm going to hand over to Rosie, um, who will talk us through the application form. So as, as I mentioned before, if you're applying to both strand one and strand two, you will need to complete two separate application forms, as they have slightly different objectives and will be assessed separately. Um, what we'll do today is we're going to focus on the adapt and respond application form, as this is a little bit more detailed and um, the demand for digital is slightly more straightforward. So Rosie will talk us through the little bit more detailed one and um, yeah, take it away, Rosie. Brilliant, thanks, Patrick. Um, so here is what um, the application form um, will look to you when you, uh, when you click on the link there. So um, there are quite a few questions in it and we're just gonna focus on the main ones here. Um, so the first section of the application form goes through the mission and the activities of the organizations. Um, so we want this to get a bit of an overview of what you're doing uh, so that when we come to assess your project, we can see it uh, in the context of your organization. Um, so we've got two questions about this. Uh, one to talk about the overall um, objectives of the organization and then uh, a bit more detail into the day to day activities. So this test organization, um, they support children with autism in Sligo um, and that's their overall mission. Uh, and then they go into a bit more detail on the types of therapy that they provide. So the speech and language therapy and uh, the art play and art therapy and the support that they give to the children and the parents. Uh, to note, on the application form, there are little blue icons with an eye in the middle. Um, if you hover over those, then it will give you a bit more information on the question itself and um, the, the, types of the types of answers we want to, to see from you. So they will appear throughout the application. Um, so use those uh, as they're really helpful. So this organization's annual income 
for the past financial year is 800,000. So this will determine how much they can apply for. So overall, in the uh, adapt and respond strand, they can apply to up to 10,000 euro. Um, when it comes to the annual income, we've had a couple of questions coming in um, about uh, whether it's this year's or last year's annual income. Um, we base it on your annual accounts. So if you're expecting 2020 to be a lower annual income because of COVID-19, um, that doesn't come into account when we're looking at how much funding you can have. Um, it'll only be based on the annual accounts, your most recent ones, um, so 2019 or 2018 if you don't have 2019. Um, and that will, that will then determine how much you can apply for. Great. Um, so uh, before we move on, I guess just the first section there, as you mentioned, Rosie, it's very much around your mission. Um, I would ask you guys to be as clear and concise in this section as possible. Um, focus it. What we want to know is, as Rosie mentioned, who you support, how you support them, and what the objective or outcomes of this support should be. So Rosie's given a great example here. Um, we really just want to understand the problem your organization is attempting to solve. So really just make it clear and concise, as I say, it's going to help us a lot to understand what the work you're doing is and how we can best support you. Um, and then I think the second question is very much focused on the operations, isn't it, Rosie? So you've, you've talked mm. it through and the example here is great as well. It gives us a good picture on how you implement that mission, how you, you deliver those services on a day-to-day -day basis. So. Um, say as clear and concise as possible. Um, Rosie? Perfect. Um, so the next section we're going to look at is the, the project details itself. Um, so this organization is looking for training for virtual therapy. Um, so they're wanting to train up their staff and their volunteers so that they can provide um, better virtual therapy to the children that they're supporting. Um, this is a good example because it's that internal adaptation that they're making which will have a really uh, important benefit uh, for the families and the children that they support. So um, please note that there are limits on uh, the number of words you can have in your answers. So we want you to be brief when you're describing the project uh, and when you're talking about the impact of it. Uh, but we also we want you to be really specific in terms of what the project is. So in the overview box here, you can see that they've applied, they'd like to apply for, for 10 hours of training for their five staff, their 50 volunteers over a four week period. So they've been really specific with the, the time scale uh, and with how many people in their organization will benefit from this. Um, in the second question, we really want to get an idea of how COVID-19 has affected your organization um, and then what this proposal will do to address those issues. So they've said in this um, test application that uh, because of the restrictions, their face-to-face -face therapy isn't possible. And they've trialed their virtual therapy, but it hasn't been as successful as they wanted. So they're going on this training to allow them to provide better virtual therapy to their children. Um, so it's, it's looking at that issue and then the response to that issue there. Great. Uh, the only thing I'd say there is uh, for the project name, please be creative. Um, we really want to get a sense of the project. It helps us get a, a sense of how this is going to be and to be honest, it uh, will also flow through to reporting and marketing at a later stage. So, um, yeah, have some fun with the application. <laughs> um, so the next section is about um, the internal impact that this proposal will make on your organization and then the more external impact on the beneficiaries that you support. Um, so in this case, the training will make sure that their staff and their volunteers um, can uh, provide better therapy uh, and then externally it means that the the children will benefit from this better therapy um, so they've been quite specific with what they want what they expect the children to um, to gain from the therapy so they want the children with autism to regain the skills that they lost during COVID-19 so that specific target they've set for themselves in that uh, in that expected impact on the vulnerable groups your organization supports question um, at the bottom there, it says the project, the project or funding start date. Um, grants will be made if you're successful in December this year. So we expect your project to start in January 2021 and then it will run for a full year. Um, please don't apply for anything longer than 12 months. Um, this project and these proposals are just for, for one year projects. Perfect. I'm just reiterating the, ge the geographic aspect there. Um, 
as Rosie mentioned, this is where the primary impact will take place. So if, for example, your head office is located in Westmead, but your project is focused on supporting communities in Roscommon, uh, please select Roscommon as your district because that's where the activity is going to be taking place and the social impact is going to be. Um, so just think that through. Um, if you're applying as a collective, so it, as part of a branch network, please use the location of your main office. So that might be your national office. We have got a query about um, retrospective funding, so if the project is already underway or if it um, is un starts uh, to happen during the assessment period, um, this funding has to be for projects that have yet to start. Um, so if it's already occurring um, or if you're expecting it to occur in the next couple of months, that won't be eligible and we need to, we're expecting projects um, to, to start in January 2021. Perfect. Uh, and then on to the budget. So um, for this application, it's a pretty simple budget. It's going to cost €2,000 uh, and it's €200 Euro per hour for 10 hours. So um, they've, they've sort of set that out all very clearly. They haven't raised any funding so far and that's okay. Um, we're not expecting you to have found uh, match funding or to have uh, all the gaps filled. But if you are receiving match funding from other um, trusts or donors, then you please do uh, put it in there so that we can see that. Um, in the breakdown and the description area of their budget, they have broken it down there, which is really important. So they've been specific that, that 2,000 euro is for 10 hours. Um, and that's the sort of detail we want to see, um, rather than just saying 2,000 euro for training. As an organisation, they could apply for more than their eligible funding. So um, they can apply for 10,000 from us, but if the project costs 15,000, that's okay, but um, the total that you can apply for is that 10,000 and you'll have to fill that extra 5,000 elsewhere. And then finally, on the year one column, um, please only fill that one in. Uh, feel free to ignore the year two and year three, um, as this project will only run for one year, uh, but the totals uh, will remain the same at the furthest uh, right hand side. Great. And then finally, onto the documents. So as Patrick mentioned, um, we expect you to submit um, four documents and, the, and with the safeguarding if uh, applicable. So we need to see your constitution, your annual accounts, a bank statement and the safeguarding policies. Uh, there'll be more information on our grants hub and on the criteria and in the FAQs for uh, the documents required and how much uh, detail we expect in those documents. Um, if you are having trouble with um, submitting them, then please email us at COVID response and we'll be able to help you with that. Um, but please don't do it 10 minutes before the deadline. Uh, we expect that we do expect a lot of queries at that point. So um, if it is too close to the deadline, we may not be able to help you before that deadline passes. Um, we can't accept uh, submissions without all the documents and we can only accept soft copies, um, no hard copies there. So right down at the bottom, it talks about um, saving your application as a draft and also submitting it. So you can come back to it over uh, a few days or a few weeks if you'd like, um, just save it as a draft each time. But when it does come to submitting it, please remember to hit submit um, as we can't see it until the submission is complete. So we won't be able to assess anything that hasn't been submitted. Perfect. Um, and I just add in two things there is that um, one, when you're registering for the application form please check your junk or your spam folder and um, so you'll be sent once you register you'll be sent a link to the application form and um, so by default sometimes it goes into your spam or junk so please do check that and then also um yes a, a save as you go so as we yeah. said you, you have the option to save as you go and um, please don't exit out of the window uh, because you will lose all of it unless you have click save and we don't want that to happen. And then lastly, um, as much as we want to see your applications come in, please don't rush it. There's no need to apply this morning and submit this morning. Um, take your time, think it through, understand the criteria, and then put the time into it. Um, you, there's no, it's not a race. You know, the application period is going to be there until the 30th of September. So use that time wisely and make sure that you're happy with the application form. And Great. Um, so Rosie, I think you've covered a lot of it there in terms of the uh, the due diligence and the the um, attachments that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, no hard copies 
thank you. Um, we're trying to put down on paper as well. So um, only upload your digital copies um, of all of those documents. Yeah. So I guess, yes, very importantly, um, what this fund does not cover. So we've talked a lot about um, the two strands and what it can potentially cover. And just so we are quite clear in the objectives as well, we will not be able to support projects that are not in line with current government guidelines. So please do inform yourself of all of these and make sure that your, your project is in line with the government guidelines at that time. Um, we do not support profit making enterprises. Um, sporting organizations, unfortunately, are not eligible for this fund. Schools as well. Um, religious or political activities um, aren't covered by this fund. Projects that are already happy and have already happened. So as Rosie said, um, projects that are either in place or will have completed by the time the application period is finished, um, unfortunately won't be eligible. So please do consider the implementation period. It is January 2020, 2021 to December 2021. Um, so it can take place at any point throughout that. But if it happens any earlier, unfortunately, we won't be able to consider that. Um, we unfortunately can't support applications from individuals and um, applications that are also missing the required governance documents as we discussed they will not be considered um, we we do anticipate a high volume so please do make sure that everything is attached otherwise uh, we won't be able to review it and consider it and also projects um, take place outside of the Republic of Ireland will not be eligible for this funding so I guess that's um, an overview of both strands. Um, I hope that was informative. I guess Rosie now has some of the questions that have come through this morning. Um, Rosie, do you want to talk us through some of those? Yeah, so we've had, we've had a lot of questions in. Um, we won't be able to get through all of them, um, but if there are any in the webinar chat that we haven't uh, covered, do email COVID response at foundation.ie. Um, and if we're not covering them here, we'll cover them over email. Um, so one of the questions that came in was about core costs, and I know Patrick highlighted this, that core costs can be included if it's uh, volunteer expenses and staff wages, but only if it's part of the application itself. So we wouldn't accept uh, an application solely for a new staff member. Um, the core costs that won't be included is uh, sort of rent and bills uh, and vehicle maintenance. So just keep that in mind uh, when you are applying. Um, one of the other questions was on reporting. So um, the different strands, which are two different application forms, uh, that was another question that came out, um, is that there'll be different reporting requirements for each strand. So in the demand for digital strand, we'll require an outcome report after 12 months. And then for the adapt and respond, we'll require an interim report at six months, and then the outcome report at 12 months. Um, so kind of questions that we'll be asking, we're sort of looking for you to evaluate the successes and the challenges of the project. Um, and what you would do differently in the future if it was to run again. Uh, and then we also want to hear some stories of the impact that the project has made. So if you're thinking about, as you're doing the project, what sort of things you should be recording. Um, we want to get the overview from your point of view of, of how the project has gone. And then also um, some of those, those key highlights and the key learnings um, that you've picked up along the way. Um, we had a question on the local branches. I know there's been a, fair, there's been a few questions on the local branches. Um, so if you have a branch network, um, you can apply through your head office, um, sort of in a streamlined way for work that can happen in the local branches. Um, if you are a membership organisation uh, and your branches have different constitutions, then um, they can apply as separate organisations because they are separate legal entities. Um, so. For example, I, we got one from YouthWork Ireland. So the different YouthWork Islands and their locations, if they have separate constitutions, then they can apply uh, as individual organisations. And just on that, uh, Rosie, if, uh, conversely, if they are uh, separate, separate branches under one constitution, um, you will then operate under the, if you're through the national head office. And um, as I say, that will be assessed based on the highest level. So it will be under, you can apply up to, maximum of 50,000 per strand or a cumulative 100,000. Um, so mm -hmm. Just bearing that in mind. Yeah, um, and then we've got one final question about the collaborative projects. There will be a separate uh, application form for those collaborative projects. So if you are considering them, 
then do email us and we'll be able to talk you through it and send you that link to the collaborative application form and they'll be assessed as those uh, as a collaborative project um, but if you are collaborating with someone in the adapt and response strand that will count as your application to that strand you can't apply for the collaborative project and then your own project and we'll be checking this so um, the collaborative project will take precedence when it comes to assessing uh, and so your uh, adapt and response strand if you do apply for both won't be counted um, we are running very close to time so i think um, we'll wrap up there but we will um any questions that are still uh, coming in do send them to covid response at foundation.ie um and we'll be able to answer them there and i suppose good luck with the application form perfect so i guess on behalf of the entire team at the community foundation for ireland i'd like to express our sincere thanks to those who made this fun possible particularly as Denise mentioned Deirdre O'Kane who cajoled and coordinated a host of different performers to be involved in Ortida's comic relief. I'd also like to say thanks to the entire committee who established the fund and have supported numerous organisations across Ireland since. A big thank you also to the talented, innovative and professional team at Kite Entertainment who delivered an engaging night of comedy and performances all in support of a good cause. On behalf of the Community Foundation for Ireland, I would also like to thank the government for providing match funding, which has helped us raise almost 6 million euro in funding that will support communities across Ireland as they adapt and respond to the challenges posed by COVID-19. So as Rosie said, best of luck with the application. Please do send any queries you have uh, into covidresponse at foundation.ie. And thank you very much. Thanks to Rosie and Patrick for a really clear presentation. And thanks to everybody for attending this morning.